Good evening and welcome to our second Community Spotlight with our Mayor Edwards from here in Buckhannon. Uh, this program is brought to you by MSVI and Channel 3 Television here in Buckhannon, West Virginia. So um, we're hoping that we have some folks that uh, are tuning into these Community Spotlights and we're going to tell you a little bit more about what goes on in the city of Buckhannon. So welcome. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Carol. Good to be with you again. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how the city is structured, but I found out you've been to a meeting and I wanted you to share with the folks just a little bit about the meeting you went to in Washington, D.C. Because yes, I think that's something that hasn't happened before. Is that correct? Um, <clears throat> no, there has not been a mayor that has attended a National League of Cities meeting, which is a uh, group that comes together twice a year and it it's incorporates all of large and small municipalities throughout the nation. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a brainstorming session on what is it the big cities are doing and what is it our small cities are doing and how can we incorporate the two to actually... Networking. Yes, it, it encourage more for our communities. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting what you take away from each one of the different aspects. Like for large cities, um, they do a lot of things different than we do in the small cities. Mm -hmm. But they really want to know what it is small cities are doing to, for bigger cities to be in, engaged. What do we learn from each other? Absolutely. And, and I took away from that meeting quite a bit from um, a lot of the larger cities and smaller cities mm -hmm. and how they're getting their communities to participate, getting more volunteers, and getting the word out about their communities for people to come. It, I'm noticing, though, when I was there, that a lot of what used to be people coming from into the urban population, mm -hmm are now looking at the rural population as a way Smaller to city, engage yeah. your people um, because of the disconnection on larger cities. Mm -hmm. uh, we were there from last Sunday to uh, Thursday, and we also took the opportunity while we we're there in Washington, D.C. to meet with our legislators. Uh, we met with uh, Senator Shelley Moore Capito and okay. Senator Manchin to forward or progress a lot of the issues we're having here in Buchanan so that they understand that you know we're looking at a new recreational complex. Mm -hmm. We're looking at our fire fees. We're looking at certain things that we need to have developed here in the town, and it's a voice for us to be able to do that. And they seem very encouraged and very happy. Well, that connects them. It you really know, does. You, you can hear you can hear stories or you can read things, but if you talk face to face, you can find out a lot of interesting things that yep. that sort of bring you together on sure. some different areas. That's absolutely right. And one of the things that they were most excited about, of course, is our bicentennial next year and the 75th strawberry festival and i'll give you a little hint they're uh -huh. very excited to be here for that if they i know can. i am just i understand they're both to be they're supposed to be here for strawberry festival they can get so. it in their schedules yeah. that's going to be a yeah. great day and uh my next thing i'll do is to talk to our state legislators and see if we can get them all down here as well that would be a great coup for the city of mm -hmm. buchanan to have all of your legislators your lawmakers mm -hmm. to see what buchanan does and what a great community it is to live in and be here and to live mm -hmm. well when as we go along with maybe a few of these community spotlights we'll zero in on what the plans are for next year for the bison well it's not bicentennial it's the the celebration for the 200th year is it, it, is, it yes. is well it, it is, is. Then. yes ma'am <laughs> so that's going to be exciting it was so what was one of the you told us about you know yeah. sharing ideas what was the one thing that really excited you most about attending this meeting um, I'll be honest with you, it was we, and this is strange, I'm a Republican, but President Obama showed up to give a speech at one of our, uh, during the conference, mm -hmm. and to see and engage with all of the rest of the folks from at the national level, and to see how they're really starting to concentrate on what the needs are of the smaller communities. Uh, while we were there, they also had the Department of the Interior Secretary there. Um, there were about four secretaries of the um, of the president's council that mm -hmm. were there mm -hmm. and they are all very much engaged in how the city can uh, smaller cities can become a lot more um, involved in national politics and uh, state politics I took a lot away from that as well but I think the most fun thing I met I did was um, I had an opportunity to talk with the mayor of Phoenix Arizona oh and we had an enlightening conversation for a good 45 to 50 minutes and you know from the west coast to the east coast mm -hmm. uh, but we both came to the conclusion that people are people anywhere and they have suburbs not unlike what Buchanan mm -hmm. would have like we discussed before mm -hmm. Tenerton, French Creek, Rock Cave and Just how maybe it is a little larger on a larger scale mm -hmm. yes absolutely but um, 
as Phoenix, they're trying to figure out how do you engage those other communities into the main community. And we started discussing on, from a county's perspective, how do we grow a neighborhood of a county? How do we take French Creek, Rock Cape, Tenerton, and bring them all together as one? I know in our minds we think of it as all one, mm -hmm. but how do we engage the cities or the you know different areas to come together as one? Not unlike what's that? What's next, West Virginia? That's been discussed, mm -hmm. and I think our, our neighbors have been looking. Have at. you been going to that? I have not had the opportunity, to, but I'm looking forward to going to one. I think they're they're progressing very nicely with yes. it. Yes. And I think there's one. Well, there were several this there were week. Several. Yeah. Yes. So several if this you couldn't week. go one night, you might check the calendar, and they, if, <coughs> yes. as they move on, they may have some more as yeah. well. And they've been doing them in the elementary schools. Yes, and so it's easy for everybody to find. It's at a good time. Mm -hmm. And again, it opens the discussion up on how do we help each other make a better community for ourselves. That's awesome. And there's never a bad thing, a bad discussion when it comes to that. No, no. I think networking is, is a real positive. You know, when you can get some folks together and share ideas yes. and see what the input is for mm -hmm. maybe some of the smaller groups of how they would like to, to work with the city. And that's how it gets done. That's how yeah. things get done. That's true. Well, I think that's great that you were able to go to this. I and enjoyed it. Did, you, did any of the councilmen go with you? Michael uh, Dosser, <coughs> city administrator. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, that's the rest of the uh, council did not go. Um, it's not inexpensive, mm -hmm. so it had to be all gone. It would have been quite a bit out of our budget. But Michael but, Doss is the administrator, yep. so that's a good. And he got a chance to learn on other as well, like on at my from my perspective mm -hmm. on small towns, uh, rural America. He was able to garner a lot of information on the budgeting processes and how do we grant get grant funding and what's the best process to ask your legislators for certain monies for certain projects. Mm -hmm. How do you get the attention out there to grab um, such? funding so um, he took a lot as well out of it that's great I understand you're reaching out to the schools too you went yes, visiting you yes. and Robin Simons I think she went with yes, you uh, councilman Simons okay. uh, councilwoman Simons uh -huh. went um, we went to Tenerton Elementary and got to visit with Mrs. Lamb's fourth grade class and I gotta tell you it was it was a fantastic time it's amazing to me how much these uh, youth and children understand about government. You know, when you take it down to the very basics mm -hmm. on what their needs and wants are, the, any community wants to address their children first mm -hmm. and the safety and all of anything that goes around. Well, they're our future. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so they, um, they actually taught me some things, some of the things that we need here in Buchanan. One of the big things was kids, I told you I'd mention uh, the GameStop. Of course, got to have a GameStop for all the kids that play their little video games. Now, I'm not sure what that is. Can you explain it sure. to our viewers? It is all, it, it's a small business, um, and it's all about video games. Mm -hmm. All the different aspects of video games, and you can rent them or you can buy them. And kids go through these games so quickly anymore, mm -hmm. and it's you're roughly about 50 to $60 for some of the good games. But you can go rent them for $5 for a week. Play the game, get over, and then But there's no on. place to do that? Not here. Not okay. here. They have to go all the way to Clarksburg to do it. Well, that could be fixed, couldn't it? Well, we're doing our best. <laughs> yes, we are going to do our best. But um, this would be my second opportunity. I also went up to French Creek mm -hmm. Elementary probably about three months ago and met with fifth graders out there and a bunch of bright students out of French Creek as well. Oh, elementary. our children are bright. They are. It's, it's amazing to me. And I keep hearing how our children are becoming dislocated as far as society is mm -hmm. concerned with their little TV games and their phones. I did not find that to be the case at all. Very much engaging, very articulate. They, they spoke to me as, as, as the mayor with respect mm -hmm. and had some very great questions. And we had a great discussion out there with uh, particularly at Tenerton with our last visit. And are you planning on visiting some of the others or do you need to wait for an invitation? Well, I would <coughs> usually wait for an invitation. I don't want to barge in. And it usually revolves around their governmental class. When the teachers actually get to a point mm -hmm. where they start at national, go to state, and then with local politics or local uh, lawmaking or municipals, um, that's when they'll usually call me and ask me to come in. And um, I invite any teacher to ask me because I love it. This is one of the fun things in my job is to do that. I think you like to get out and about with the I different do. folks. <laughs> I and do. that's Well, that's good. I that do. You know, that gives you a chance to let people know who you are mm -hmm. and also to be able to talk about the city and how it operates. And that's where we're going now. Okay. Um, a lot of people think that you're the mayor yeah. and we have city council folks they run everything yeah 
you know basically the buck does stop here yes but you have a lot of different boards uh -huh. uh, a lot of utilities that we yes, have in the city so i wanted you to explain to our viewers how those boards and how those utilities operate okay. i think that's something that is very important and maybe yes. we don't understand it yes um and quite honestly it's what makes this city run on a day-to-day -day basis when you go to flush your toilet, that's a sanitary department. We have a sanitary plant that is out off um, by Weyerhaeuser. Mm -hmm. um, we have, um, we also have the water department, which is out over by um, Randolph, mm -hmm. over there, Wood Street area. We have our um, recycling center or uh, transfer station, which is our garbage pickup we have every day. For somebody's getting it every day, I get mm -hmm. it once a week. And then we have, um, we have water, sanitary, uh, sanitation and um, the street department I don't forget about the street department with the potholes now at this time of the year coming up those are actually the core group of people that make this city run on a day-to-day -day basis without any one of those services we as citizens are lacking something and your tax dollars our tax dollars go to make sure that those services are provided on a daily basis I have three daughters if my bathroom is not working properly <laughs> There is a problem in my house. I have to go to a hotel because it gets pretty scary. Um, if we didn't have the clean water, which is really highly regulated by our PSCs, you'd be amazed at the skills that you have to have and the knowledge to be able to take water from our river, turn it into pure, awesome drinking water, which we've won prizes for mm -hmm. from the Rural Water yeah. Association. Um, how to take our, um, for lack of a better word, our sewage from our houses, put it into a plant and make it come out as good as, if not sometimes better than the water going into the, the, the river that's flowing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, without those things, we have an administrative staff as well that works in that's City true. Hall that when you come to pay your bills, um, you always, always courteous, friendly, um, and will help you solve any problems you have. Those are the day-to-day -day workers here. And I encourage all of our citizens to understand that um, they need to be thanked as well. It's 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 not a thankful job to go have to dig, you know, in the snow no, and, and the and rain. And these wonderful guys that do the garbage pickup. Oh my gosh, what would we what do job. without them? They're just as important as yeah. anybody else. Yeah. Doesn't matter what the job is that you do, mm -hmm. you do it to the best of your ability right. and not always get thanked for what you do. Yeah, absolutely. And I thank them all the time when I see them because I would hate to go lug my garbage out to the transfer mm -hmm. station, which used to have to be done. That used mm -hmm. to be years and years ago, decades ago, that's how you did it. Now, going back to the utilities, each one of the utilities or departments that I spoke of has a board, and on the board are members that serve, and usually about five on each. City Council usually appoints who those board members are. And they're city residents, correct? Yes, yes. In most cases, there are. Now, there are a few commissions or boards that you don't necessarily have to be, but our utility boards, the ones that I mentioned, mm -hmm. yes, you have to be a city okay. resident. Um, they get together on a monthly basis and with the director or operator of each one of the different areas, sanitation, sewage, whatever, uh, get together, discuss what's been going on for the month, any new projects. For instance, right now we are, for a good example, over in the Senate, over off um, by McDonald's, we are laying a new sewage line. Mm -hmm. um, what that is for is for runoff water from rain, so we don't have it all collected on the streets like we had a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We discussed that as well as all going to the manholes. Well, when that manhole starts coming out, then you, you know, know you're going to have a, a little bit of a flood. Yeah. So each week, each month, um, everybody gets together on these boards and we discuss what the different businesses that's happening that mm -hmm. week or that month, and um, we approve either something that should be done or should not be done. We also get a lot of correspondence or letters from citizens that are concerned about so and so or such and such, and we address those as well during those meetings. Um, those are all open meetings, so any citizen that wants to come, um, we usually meet on every Thursday at 3 o'clock right here in City Hall. So anybody's more than welcome to come and just sit in to see what's going on with each one of so these departments. So they're all open. They're very much open meetings. Um, we also keep minutes, of course, with the open sunshine mm -hmm. on, so you can go back if you're not sure if your problem was addressed or if there's something that's ever happened, you can go back and read about it and say, did, we, did they ever do anything about that? Well, let's make sure. That's mm -hmm. kind of a way to double check to make sure we're doing our jobs properly. Um, city Council usually appoints the people who are there. Uh, okay. For instance, right now I have a uh, opening for our uh, waste board. Uh, the waste board is uh, the folks that are in charge of the recycling center and the transfer station out on um, 
um, what's the uh, name? Mudlick. Mudlick Road. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, so we have an opening for that if you're interested. All you now have to is do, that a city resident? You would need to be a city okay. resident for that. Uh, unfortunately, all of these boards that we're discussing now, you would have to be a city resident. But you just send in a letter of interest. I so-and-so would like to sit on this board, and um, I feel that I would be helpful in this in such and such a way. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Um, the city council, if the next city council member takes a meeting, takes a look at that and approves or doesn't approve or goes through the list of people and think they try to fit the best person into that position that will help fulfill what the obligations are for those departments. Now, I know this is a question somebody might be thinking about. Well, if I put my name in there, is that a freebie? Do I get paid for that or is that just something I do to volunteer? Just for your time. Um, now, the boards that we're talking about, the four, sewage, water, sanitation, and um, sewage, water, I'm always forgetting one, transfer, those are all paid boards. Okay. Um, they get a very minimum amount. It's not, you're not going to get rich. It's not no, a right but, job. But you do get paid for your time and your input and mm -hmm, information. Mm -hmm. um, all the rest of the boards or commissions that we have within the city are all free or non-paid and volunteer, volunteer mm -hmm. just from your time. And we get a lot of people for those as well. Well, I think that's important. That's really a way is. to give back to your community. Yes, yes, very much so. And those are both county as well as city yes. residents. Mm -hmm. So if there's somebody out in the county that would like to participate, yes. they could let you know. As a matter of fact, tonight we're looking at Ordinance 300, which is our Animal Care and Control Ordinance. Mm -hmm. You can be a member of the county to be on that, even though we're addressing an ordinance for the city. Um, we can appoint from the county on there. Um, there's a couple of other boards that are like that. Um, unfortunately, there's two other boards that um, they're called commissions, civil service commissions. Mm -hmm. That's your police, fire, uh, police and fire civil service commissions. And again, you do have to be residents because we're talking about mm -hmm. municipal mm -hmm. business. Um, they're non-paid, but they are very well structured on how we hire policemen and any issues involving the police department mm -hmm. are discussed. Same with the fire department. And don't you have a planning commission as well? And we do have the planning commission um, who just recently came up the comprehensive plan, the Buchanan 2020 comprehensive mm -hmm. plan, which was actually mandated by the state that we have that done so that we could um, actually expand the city if we ever look at annexation or actually doing rezoning. For instance, if somebody lives in, a, in an area that's residential, but it's now become primarily mm -hmm. business, we can change it from uh, residential to commercial. Um, those are things that we look at through that commission And as that well. doesn't that have to be done through public meetings as well or not? Well, they're all open but, meetings. Well, meetings. I mean, if, if they decide to do something, don't you have to have so many public meetings or not? Well, it depends on what, what they're trying is. to address. Okay. In most okay. cases, they get together and plan <clears throat> on what eventually the, and for instance, in this case, the comprehensive plan looks like. Mm -hmm. So you have committees looking at different things. You come together, uh, make a plan, and then ultimately they have to approve it. The, the, in this place, the planning commission approves it, and then they bring it to city council to approve what they've approved. So uh, it's a checks and balance. Absolutely, and it's a long, lengthy checks and balance system. <laughs> I've watched some of those meetings. <laughs> that can get quite long. Well, city council can get long sometimes, but oh, yes. you know, I th I think that you know, I think the folks are beginning to take a little more interest in I'm what's glad. going on with the city and how yeah. it operates. And you're talking about these boards. One one other question I have in in regard to the boards. Each board of, of the utility or whatever, don't they have their own budget and their own funding? Yes. Thank you. Yes. In fact, you could consider them each separate businesses. Okay. Okay. So let's just say I am Procter & Gamble. Okay. And Procter & Gamble has, um, they do dish soap, mm -hmm. they do food, they do sodas, they mm -hmm. do, you know, various businesses coming under the umbrella of the main business which would be called Procter & Gamble. Mm -hmm. In this case for the citizens it would be each one of these departments that come under the umbrella of the city of Buchanan. You can consider them independent businesses because they act on their own but on a monthly basis or for any major purchases which the city helps fund and make mm -hmm. sure it happens um, they come to city council for approval on a lot of things. Um, but keeping in mind again they are very separate as far as employees go from the city of Buchanan. Um, they, they are their own entities, let's just put it that way.
That's interesting. You know, I, I'm not sure that everybody understands that. No. You know, yeah. they think that all the decisions are made right here at city right. council. Yes, you do have to make some of the very basic uh, rules and regulations, but these right. boards are very important in the running of whichever utility they're they're working with. Absolutely, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, on a day-to-day -day 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 basis. basis. Yeah. Um, and as the mayor, um, I am what could be considered as the CEO, chief executive officer of the of business. This city. <laughs> well, yeah, I, <laughs> the business. <laughs> I know enough to be scary on a lot of these. I defer off as most leaders do to the people that are the experts mm -hmm. in their fields. Mm -hmm. I can't go to the water department and say, you know what, we need to decrease the amount of the bill, water bill. Well, my plant operator is going to say, sir, I don't think you understand how much that chemical costs to do that. Right. Do you understand how much a pump costs and how much we mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. basis this plant works? So I get to listen and then so does the council and input, but we always have to defer off to the experts. Mm -hmm. So we're just we're just the umbrella for them. Now, this is a question that, that some folks might might want to have the answer to, and uh -huh. I, I don't know if I should ask it, but I will. Go ahead. Are all these boards solvent? They are very much solvent. Um, and I, I prefer another word, fluid. Fluid, um, okay. Um, on, a, on a continuing basis, they're looking at new, um, new projects, new ways of going. Um, there's always new technology out there that mm -hmm. I learned, even at our meeting we discussed earlier, mm -hmm. the National League of Cities. How do smaller cities with an infrastructure, okay, and when I mean the infrastructure, I'm talking about a plant that's almost 40 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about uh, street equipment that's 10, 15 years old. The day-to-day -day operating things that we have to have is our infrastructure. And if we don't take care of those properly, then we're going to lose in the long run mm -hmm. because we end up just investing more money in something that we could have either maintained or recognized that we needed to have changed. Well, and, and as more people come to the area, they're going to need sewer, they're going to need Absolutely. water, they're going to need all the things that you have, which is going to stretch it a little bit for yeah. your utilities. And we have to think of the future, right. not unlike the comprehensive plan. I mean, we've got to look, and in most of, and I'll say all of our departments, we have a five or ten year plan so that we, mm -hmm. we are always looking at that to say, okay, well, eventually, um, for right now, for instance, Elkins Public Service District is looking at an extension of their water lines. Well, a lot of people don't realize that the water that goes out to Elkins starts at our water plant. So it's the That's true. A lot of people water don't know plant, that. Mm -hmm. but when they get their bill, it's through the Elkins Public Service District. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all the same water coming from the same place, but because of the location of where they're at and far out, they're in charge of that area. So you could actually say a business within a business mm -hmm. within a business. <laughs> and they, again, have their own uh, personnel that they work on. And right now they're looking at expanding water lines out. Right, A lot of people don't know this, but we also serve water out to Randolph County. We serve water out to Lewis County. We serve water out to Barber County okay. on the outskirts. <laughs> so the city of Buchanan Water is traveling quite a ways. Now, if somebody's out there saying, oh, are we going to run out of water? That's a, a good question. Well, well, you know, a good you question, know, How many people can you service before your run supply, out? especially <clears throat> if you have really hot weather, you yes. know? Well, I assure you that the plants as they were built, um, and I'll just say in particular our water plant was built uh, 25 years ago, mm -hmm. it could serve another 50% of what it serves now. Well, that's interesting so we could to know that. Up. We could almost double up on the services, but keeping in mind as we look further down the road, we're going to have to look at upgrading that mm -hmm. water plant mm -hmm. to be able to provide the best technology and the most cost-effective way of providing those services. And that's the way the city looks at it. These are services for its citizens, not just in the city of Buchanan, mm -hmm. but in this case with our utilities throughout Upshur County. Right and even other counties, which right. I wasn't even really Well, I, a lot of folks may not know that. Yes, yes. But So, you know, we do have a big responsibility here in yes. Upshur County and in the city of Buchanan. Mm -hmm. And I think what I've gathered out of this meeting is that you still want more cooperation. You want, want everybody to feel like we're one big community. We are. And we are. Yes, we, are. we are. I don't know. I don't want people to think that. I want people to know that. I want people to understand that it's not just the city of Buchanan has a drawn line map mm -hmm. that was made years and years ago. But I do not believe that anything stops there at those lines. 
my dad can live across the street. Is he an Upshur Countyan? No, he's still my dad, and he's a Buchananian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we Buchanan talked about that. that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's not. It I, I I really truly believe it's about time that we start thinking as a whole, as opposed to the pieces. I really do. What else would you like to share that we might not have touched upon today? <laughs> Oh my gosh, then I understand that's a lot of information to take in. Uh, what but it's, I, it's information I think that some folks may have wondered about, yeah. but had never found out, you know, for sure how, how this works. works. Yep. And uh, so there's a lot of different components to putting together a city. It really gets complicated. Yes, it it can really get complicated. Now I know some folks are, are watching the newspapers. At uh -huh. this point, do you have a new uh, attorney coming in and a new zoning officer? Have you selected those yet or are you still working on it? We are still working on that. We have narrowed it down to two on each side, but okay. now comes to the negotiation part of, uh, of the, the of the the negotiations mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. those services um, keeping in mind that today's rates for an attorney and for a zoning officer and the re regulations that they're required to know and understand right. are expensive mm -hmm. and so we're now in the negotiation process with two of each two lawyers and two zoning officers um, that we feel are going to be the best fit for the city and help provide the necessities and their job descriptions as best as they can. And this is a decision by the total city council? It is, all by the whole council. Um, keeping in mind that the city attorney, of course, is our legal advisor for Correct. any of our meetings. Mm -hmm. He also writes city ordinances, he understands municipal law, he understands corporate law because we're talking about different businesses mm -hmm. from within the city. Um, the zoning officer, um, our building code enforcement officer is really what we call them, the zoning officers just for short. Um, has to understand the new rules, uh, modern rules pertaining to the building of um, new businesses, new houses, and they still have to understand the old rules mm -hmm. as far and as a lot of our older homes. Put signage up, that's a big one. The, the signage, yeah, mm -hmm. from our zoning aspect. Um, right, you don't want somebody putting a big sign, lighted sign in your front yard where you can't see up and down the street. So <laughs> those reason why those rules were there. Mm -hmm. um, there were issues with some of our signs on um, a couple of our main streets that are really bright. Um, they're, they're, okay, they're religious facilities <laughs> that were really bright. But some citizens came and go, you know, that is too bright at night. I can't see if I'm turning left or right. Mm -hmm. Is there something you can do about it? And sure enough, um, I was able to call and say, is there any way we can dim them at night so that it's easier for okay. people to see? Um, there are certain regulations on signage. There's certain regulations on how far you can put a sidewalk. Oh, away absolutely. From your house. How far your driveway can be, how big it can be, how small it can mm. be. I mean, <laughs> that's where it gets really complicated and technical, and that's why it's important for those um, for those two different professions to understand and and work within a small community. You know, it's it's not an easy job. Either one of those, no, are, and they're no, not thankful isn't. jobs. But they're serving a purpose that's that's higher it's an than, event. and yeah. So if you see them out, thank them as well for the work that they do because it's not an easy job to go. If somebody's building an add-on in their house and they're not doing it to specifications for the safety of not mm -hmm. just the residents, for the neighbors as well, Correct. they don't want your structure falling down on anybody or anything. Um, then they're the ones that are the bad guys. And go, well, I'm sorry, you're not doing that right. Here's the reason why we have to do it this way. This is how it's supposed to be done according to our rules. Now, if folks are watching and they want to know more about City Council, when huh? do you meet and are you inviting everybody to come? Do they have Absolutely. to live in the city to come? No, 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 anywhere. no, no. anywhere. Um, you don't even have to live in this county to come to one of our meetings. Uh, we meet on the first and third Thursdays of every month here at City Hall at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Um, we were fortunate enough to have a town hall meeting, That's and if awesome. you if you look out in the newspaper or pay attention on Channel Three, um, you'll see announcements if we're going to have meetings somewhere else mm -hmm. as opposed to here. We haven't had a town hall meeting in quite some time. Oh, I've heard good comments about that. Oh, so I know you're going to have another one this summer. Is we that are. Correct? We're looking in July or August. Okay. Uh, we're not sure of the place yet. The last one we had at the American Legion. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody can make it there or knew where it was, and the time wasn't right. So this time we're going to look at a new place, a new time. New day, maybe. New day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I we'll just, try anything. Anybody I, come. Just come. I've enjoyed um, our sessions, and oh, I, I hope that we are reaching out to the folks and, and getting them a little better 
knowledge of how the city operates yes. and the people who work here you know the fact that that they do it not just to get a paycheck many of them are very devoted to what they yes. do and I think that's important for folks to know yes well we're going to come back and do another one right well before you do, I want to commend you for doing this for even take think of the idea of saying you know what maybe the citizens need to know what their mayor does what does the city council do what does the city do I want to commend you that well, thank you. that was a fantastic idea I'm happy to do it I I'm hoping that you'll maybe interview some of our uh, I would council like to members. Do that. I'd like to do that. And, and maybe um, even have a forum at some time when folks can ask questions of, sure. of your council members. Yeah. Maybe have something where they can send in uh, a little a bit idea. of information of sure. what I'd like to know about and, yeah. and ask the uh, maybe address it to a certain council person. But I want but, to thank you for, oh, for oh, thank you. I, me I and appreciate it. Me when you decided to do it. <laughs> well, I I just feel like folks need to be aware. Yes. And what better way to use our access television channel, which is, and I, I want to thank Rodney Irvin. Yes. He has the station at Tennerton and is allowing us to do yes. this and is providing the services and the airtime. So we thank uh, MSVI Channel 3 Absolutely. for getting these community spotlights with our city and our mayor. So thank you, Mayor Edwards. Till My next pleasure. time. Yes. Till Join next us time. again next time on Community Spotlight. I'm Carol Long. You have a nice evening.